Ngamahi kia koutou katoa. Time to get our next uh, session underway. And uh, boy, you are all in for a treat uh, with our first keynote speaker for this morning. And it is my absolute pleasure to introduce you all to Associate Professor Selena Tusitala Marsh, a Pacific poet and scholar of Samoan, Tuvaluan, English, Scottish, and French descent. Selena was the first person of Pacific descent to graduate with a PhD in English from the University of Auckland, where she now lectures in both creative writing and Māori and Pacific literary studies. Professor Marsh has been the recipient of numerous literary awards for her work and has been widely published. Selena will talk to us about how we can use the art of storytelling to share the good mahi being done in our sector and telling the story of physical activity for well-being. Um, be prepared to get your creative juices flowing. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Associate Professor Selena Tusitala Marsh. Um, you can take that associate professor off, actually. I gave my inaugural professorial lecture um, a few weeks ago. Woo! <laughs> um, <clears throat> and it was um, problematic, actually, to be in that space in 2022 and discover that I, was, I am the only Pacifica full professor currently on staff at the University of Auckland. So that is absolutely something we need to change. Yeah. Kia ora koutou, talofa lava, bulavanaka, ma loelele, kia ora na, whakalofa lahi atu, namaste, um, g'day mate. Warm Pacific greetings to you all. Um, as tangata tiriti, um, I acknowledge the indigenous peoples of this land, ngai tahu, it's beautiful to be here in the blue skies of Otai Tahu. And um, thank you for having me. Um, <clears throat> my uh, alter ego is Mophead. Um, some of you are familiar with the first graphic memoir that I wrote um, a few years ago, telling my tale. Um, because I've learned through university that if you don't tell your tale, someone else will. Or won't, as the case may be. Um, Tusitala is my grandfather's name. Tusitala is Samoan and Tuvaluan for storyteller. It means teller of tales that I never heard till yesterday. Born away for another life today. The tale I tell is theirs and yours. A way of seeking some more of sa more of my sacred center. Today the tale I tell will book its way through tongued histories, sanctioned mysteries, spaces of silence, timeless lives. Tala Tusi, tell the book, word the spirit of brown and theory and creativity we make our sound renown. Kia ora. <clears throat> so uh, my first mop head book um, came to me in a dream, of course, like, oh, she's so creative. Actually, we all dream, and so we all get to be creative. But when I was made the New Zealand Poet Laureate for 2017 to 2019, I was gobsmacked, I was thrilled, and I was appalled that very few people knew that this country had an office of poetry, the highest offer, uh, office in the land since uh, 1996, with the first New Zealand Poet Laureate, Bill Manhire. And very few people, except for those colleagues of mine in that elite little place called the English Department at the University of Auckland, knew about it. And I was like, but, but, Taxpayers are giving me $80,000 to be this poet over the next two years. So I was determined then to get the story out there. And how do I get the broadest reach? 
I start here. I go to the kids and I plant seeds of possibility. I've just come from the Puka Puka Festival in Nelson where I visited four schools. And every single time the teachers say it's amazing for them to see a brown woman, creative, academic, accessible, sitting on the floor, telling her tale, showing them how to tell theirs. It's an honor and a privilege to be in this space, but I shouldn't be alone. I'm not alone. I just want someone like me standing here in this space in a few years time. So Mophead told the tale of how I was bullied at school for having big, fuzzy, uncontrollable hair. And that, uh, that name that I was called followed me through to, as that sometimes does, through primary to intermediate to college. And then when I was made the New Zealand Poet Laureate and I received a toko toko, a Māori carved walking stick as a symbol of my office and as a reflection of my aesthetic as a poet, it came with a long head of hair and it looked like a mop. And I saw the narrative arc, right? Oh, mop, toko toko. How do I tell that tale and let New Zealanders know this amazing thing that we're the only country in the world to do. Mophead 2 is a sequel, but not really a sequel. And it's my pleasure to read it to you this morning. It takes about 12 minutes, and then we're going to do some creative machinations with you. Is that okay? Excellent. <laughs> Shut the doors. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> so uh, I always get asked if it's a true story. Yes, it's a true story. It's a memoir. And at the end of both of these books, um, you get photos of real life meetings with real life people. Mophead 2, the Queen's poem. Mophead 2. She's mini Mophead. She's that braver, more curious part of me that is often jumping up and, up and down but gets censored by the adult me. And guess what? We've all got a mini mop head in there. It's been my challenge to let her out more and more. Two, to stand with integrity. That's when your insides match your outsides. She drew me too. So this was a really crazy idea, crazy dream. Woke up, storyboarded the whole thing in my journal, went to my publisher who publishes fiction, creative nonfiction and poetry, and I said, hey, I've got this crazy thing. Like we actually had a meeting about my memoir and I was about to leave his office and something prevented me from walking through the door and I turned around and said, uh, Sam, I've, I've got this really crazy thing. And he went, come sit down. And I showed him the rough drafts of Mophead, and then the Mophead Empire was born. So yeah, it's not often you get um, someone who draws the pictures and tells a story. But I said to Sam, don't we all start off doing that at primary school before we get told that actually you're not a good drawer? <laughs> Stop it. Go be a lawyer. Sorry. <laughs> One day, I received a letter from the Queen of England. I wonder if it's because we share the same birthday, 21st of April. Anyone else share me and the Queen's birthday? Not in this room? I'd been crowned the Commonwealth poet. Your service to the Queen, write her a poem. What's the Commonwealth? The Commonwealth is made up of countries the Queen used to rule. They were called colonies. India, Navigator Isles, New Hebrides, Ghana, Gilberts, Ellis Isles, Australia, New Zealand. 
the queen's hive was strong and powerful. She got to make all the rules for her colonies. Where's my royal jelly? She could name them. There's London in England and a London in Kiribati. She could claim them. Captain Cook, discoverer of the Pacific. Who's that dude pointing at the stars? Oh, that's Tupaya, Cook's navigator, but school doesn't teach that story. She could shame them. Well, that's not right. And tame them. We bring order and peace and boxes to take and sell your stuff in. <coughs> Phosphate, sugar, coconut, spice, guano, bird poop. But no one likes to be bullied. That's called colonialism. So the colonies started breaking the Queen's rules and making their own. Gilbert, er, Kiribas. Alice, er, Tuvalu. Talofa. I'm Tusitala, Moped's granddad. This is Piglet, my Piglet. <clears throat> Ending colonial rule wasn't easy. People died. Many are still struggling. So when I got my crown, not all my friends were happy about it. Sell out. That's when your insides don't match your outsides. Can I stand up for my people who struggled against the queen and still serve the queen? I got out my journal. Where do I stand? The answers were inside me. <coughs> to see Tala, I'm in the middle. I've always stood in the middle. My younger sister, Sam, my older brother, Luca. I grew up being caught in the middle. Stop it, you guys! Stuck in the middle. Oh, they're squashing my book. And felt like I had to choose sides. But I wouldn't choose one side. Not at home. I want to be with you both. Not at school. Sporty, arty, brainy, acty. Are you one of us? Yes. And not on the street. Are you Samoan? Are you English? Are you French? Are you Tuvaluan? Are you Scottish? Yes. Afa Kasi. and not at university. Are you a Pacific Island poet or a Pacific Island scholar? Yes, I'm a Pacifica poet scholar. But why do I stand in the middle? Again, the answers were inside me. Allah equals bridge. I bridge, not block. Honk, honk, beep, beep. You can't pass. So I ignored the sting. Jeez, can't you take a joke? 
Talk to the hand, bro. Hello, is this the palace? Yes, this is Barnaby, the Queen's helper. Kia ora, it's Mophead, the Commonwealth poet. Beautiful. Now, about the poem. You will perform it for the Queen in London. In England? It's the only London I know. Actually, there's one in the Pacific. Every year the Queen hosts Commonwealth Day at Westminster Abbey. All former colonies are invited. Why? Well, it marks our alliances. That's when you make up the rules together. And it marks our allegiances. And um, our colonial histories. Our land, the Queen's. Ah! That reminds me, the Queen has a few rules. No kidding, five to be exact. Sure, poets like rules. We like to break them. Rule one, the Queen chooses the event theme every year. This year it is unity. Great, that will be the title of your poem. Oh, for real? Is that a question? No, not really. Rule two, 3,000 people are invited, 2,000 school children aged nine and upwards, prime ministers, heads of state, and of course, the royal family. Great. The poem will need to appeal to all of them. For real? Is that a question? Well, isn't the Duke of Edinburgh 94 years old? Yes, that's correct. So the poem has to be fun for nine-year-olds and 94-year-olds? Is that a question? Yes, that's one way to look at it. Rule three, there are 53 Commonwealth countries. The poem must include all of them. Hmm, challenging. How about an acrostic poem? A poem where the first letter of each line spells something. <gasps> A equals Australia. B equals Bangladesh. C equals Cameroon. D equals Dominica. E equals Eswatini. F equals Fiji. G equals Ghana. I equals India. All bridges connect, divide. Each freeze ground instantly. Rule four. An acrostic poem might be a fine idea in theory, but the BBC are filming live. So the poem must not be longer than three minutes. Moppy may madness. The rules were hard. Why am I doing this again? I needed to build a bridge from London's smoggy streets to the sinking sands in the South Seas. I oh, where piglet? Rule five, the fifth and final rule is that the poem must not be political. That's how a country decides stuff. Are floating piglets political? The poem will be checked by the palace to make sure all the rules are followed. Moppy mayhem! There was a lot to think about. My favourite pen, my journals. I had nine months to write the poem. June, research on the Commonwealth, the Queen, Westminster Abbey, talk about it a lot, think about it a lot. July, write draft one, think some more. August, screw up draft one. Write draft two, talk some more. September, throw away draft two. Write drafts three, four, and five. October, dump drafts three, four, five, look for draft one again. November, lose draft one, eat chocolate, lots. December, 
find draft one, begin draft six. January, get writer's block, panic, eat chocolate, more research on the Commonwealth, the Queen, the Abbey. February, clear space. March, go to London to visit the Queen. Each month passed, no poem. I pulled my hair out in frustration. Then one Sunday, I took a deep breath. Everybody out of the house right now. I'm driving. Do we have cake? Sweet. No drying the dishes. They really look like that, my three sons, just saying. <laughs> I walked around and around the poem, letting the title breathe. Then I stood in the middle of it and saw the Allah. <gasps> There's a you and an I in unity. I wrote the whole poem in a week and sent it off to the palace. Then it came back. Only one word was changed. Alliances, allegiances, colonials crossed out for those who can't see it. Histories. Didn't need that word anyway. It looked like I had followed the rules. Title, unity. Nine to 94 year olds included. 53 Commonwealth nations mentioned. Less than three minutes. No politics. But the palace doesn't know what Poets know, that's my fine print. That a poem is a trickster. You can't control it. Maui, you tricked me out of my last fiery fingernail. But Granny, I wanted to know where fire came from. Oh, you're gonna know all right. That a poem is a mirage. You can't believe what you see. Oh, what a fierce warrior he is. Oi, that's a she. It's Nafanua, goddess of war. A poem is curious and brave, taking you to unexpected places. Where are we going, Naini Manoa? Oh, somewhere marvellous, Mophead. Let's talk about unity here in London's Westminster Abbey. Did you know there's a London in Kiribati, ocean, island, South Pacific Sea? We're connected by currents of humanity, alliances, allegiances, colonial histories, for the salt in the sea, like the salt in our blood, like the dust in our bones, our final return to mud means though 53 flags fly for our countries, they're stitched from the fabric of our unity. It's called the Va in Samoan philosophy. What you do affects me. What we do affects the land, sea, wildlife, Take the honeybee, nature's model of unity, pollinating from flower to seed. Bees thrive in hives, keeping their queen. Unity keeps them alive, keeps them buzzing. At this point, I turn and look at Her Majesty. She's dressed in blue and she looks up at me. They're key to our fruit and veggie supplies, but parasitic attacks and pesticides threaten the bee. Then you, then me, it's all connected. That's unity. My grandfather's from Tuvalu. 
And to be specific, it's plop bang in the middle of the South Pacific, the smallest of our 53 Commonwealth nations, the largest in terms of reading vast constellations. My ancestors were guided by sky and sea trails and way before Columbus even hoisted his sails. What we do now matters to those who go before. We face the future with our backs sailing shore to shore, for we're earning and saving for a common wealth, a common strong body, a common good health, means saving the ocean, means saving the bee, means London and the UK, seeing London and the South Seas, and sharing our thoughts over a cup of tea. There's a you and an I, in unity costs the earth and yet it's free. Kia ora. <clears throat> After the performance, the Queen admired the poem how did you memorize that long poem? It's my job, Your Majesty, I'm a poet. Yes, I suppose it is. Well done. The Duke forgot the poem. So, what do you do? I'm a poet, Your Royal Highness, I just performed back there. And two years later, Harry remembered the poem. Why, hello, it's the big-haired poet from the Abbey. And this time I've got my toko toko, my poet laureate walking stick. Wanna see? Harry took the toko toko and stomped it on the ground. You shall not pass. Like Gandalf, just in case you're missing the reference. <laughs> He was only having fun, but his words hung around. You shall not pass. Go home coconuts, school English only spoken, no native access, whites only. They reminded me of the queen and her rules. You shall pass you shall not pass. But rules are made for breaking. Now the Queen's family look different. South Africa, I greet you not only as part of the royal family, but as a, as a woman of colour. Our heroes look different. Hang on, Maui, the wind is picking up. But Naini Manoa, I'm hungry. Nafanoa, you can chillax, I've read the stars. Stick to navigation to buy an eye, will defend us. Our professors look different. Cake? Cake. Even our poets look different. Did you know there's a London in Kiribati? Where's Kiribati? It used to be the Gilbert and Alice Islands, dear. Is that political? Grandad, do get on with it. It's a, do, get, do, do get with it. It's a post-colonial world. Professor Albert says the postpart, postpart also means, oh, <laughs> Sorry, postpart doesn't just mean, thank you, doesn't just mean after colonialism. It also means around, against, and alongside. Alongside is where I stand. So here we are, just you and me, the queen from the palace, the poet from the sea, sharing our thoughts over a cup of tea. There's a you and an I in unity, 
costs the earth, and yet it's free. Kia ora. Thank you. <laughs>So a couple of takeouts about storytelling from my perspective. First one is, know who you are when you tell your story. It's amazing with workshops I've given all around the world, how, how, how often people's names contain the gems of who they are, whether it's their own name or a family name, it's an amazing thing to be able to research and extract your DNA, your creative DNA from your name. So know who you are. Know where you stand. Know your why. That's my why. Go in to work it out. For me, that's journaling. Every day, every morning, three pages longhand, I go in to work everything out. And with regards to bringing in those who've gone before, know where you've come from so you know where you are and know where you're going. The one symbol that... Um, Hang on, sorry. The one symbol that was able to capture what I wanted to do with this story was a really simple symbol. It was just sharing a cup of tea. Gumboot tea, royal tea, the great connector where people talk and have kōrero. Royals have tea, farmhands have tea. For me, that was a symbol that was able to carry this story. So, I need you to take a couple of post-it notes on your table and grab a pen or a felt tip. And I'm going to guide you through a flash creative, and I mean flash as in quick, creative writing exercise. So everyone needs at least a couple of post-it notes in front of them and a pen. All right, thank you. I want you to close your eyes. Imagine your best day at work. Imagine your best day at work. What do you see? Who's in it? What are they doing? Where are you? What do you hear? What do you smell? What can you touch? What can you taste? Keep your eyes closed. If you could choose one object or image to best represent your best day at work, what would it be?
see it as clearly as you can. It might be a pair of muddy football boots. It might be a young child skipping. Have that image or object clearly in your mind. I want you to open your eyes and write it down on the top of your post-it note. Now this might sound familiar, but that is the title of your poem. And we are going to make a haiku from that object or image. Now we've got these things called hands, and hands remind us how to do haiku. So haiku are three-lined poems, originally uh, from Japan, but I've totally colonized it for our purposes here this morning. I'm only interested in the syllabic count. So the first line is five syllables. The second line is seven syllables. And the third line is five syllables. So five, seven, five. If you've forgotten what a syllable is, <laughs> use your fingers. It's the best tip and technique for you. Five, seven, five. Try and use more concrete words than abstract words. You've just imagined your best day at work. A haiku is like taking a photo of it, a snapshot of it, a selfie. Use the things in the picture to create your haiku. Don't waste your precious words on little words like and or of, right? Use the comma. You've only got five, seven, five syllables. And just to make it really challenging because this organization is so strong, right? And it's all about connections. You must use the word play in your haiku or any variation of play. Play, player, playing, plays, played. You must use the word play in your haiku. Is everyone thoroughly confused? Good, because we thrive in our discomfort zone, right? All right, so you've got five minutes to come up with three lines, five, seven, five syllables, and then we will hear some of them, and they're on post-it notes for a reason, a fantastic reason, and I'll let you know at the end of the session. So five minutes, haiku, do you now. Thanks.
You've got two minutes left. Make sure you've got a variation of the word play in there. You've got 30 seconds. All right. As you can imagine, like I'm quite like an easygoing teacher at Auckland Uni, eh? But you stuff up my syllabic count and I get angry. So turn to the person next to you, double check, re read it out, have them double check your syllabic count. Five, seven, five, has the word play been included? One minute, go now. All right, thank you, folks. It's so cool to see adults going. <laughs> so have a look at the haiku in front of you. You've got your object or image as the title. You've got three lines. You've got the, a variation of the word play there. And at the very bottom, if you've got space, please write your role at work. You don't have to write your name. Just write your role. What do you do at work? And if I could get the roving mics roving around the room very shortly, that would be marvellous.
and we're actually going to start at the far end. Great. All right, at your table, nominate one person to share their haiku. Nominate one person to share their haiku. <laughs> Kia ora, kia ora. All right, have you got your one person? We might start with the tables with only one person. <laughs> so this side of the room, yes. Oh, he's standing up. Are you, are you with us? <laughs> so could you read the title, your haiku, and we'll all be counting. And then your role. Thank you. Uh, the title, all of mine is in Te Reo Māori. Beautiful. Um, and the title is Taikura. And it comes from a saying that goes, Ko te reo te taikura o te whakaao mārama. Which means, translates to, language is the key to understanding. Uh, my first word, the five syllables. Kori kori tia. Kori kori refers to engaging in play, play activity, but also speaks to engaging your mind and your spirit into, into action. So kori kori tia. Uh, my seven syllables is kia puta ki te whaiao, which means to move into the world of light. And my last one is Te Ao Marama, which is to gain enlightenment. Kia and ora. my role is to Whakatawira here, which is to embody uh, those particular sentences that I've just men mentioned. Kia ora. Kia ora. Kia ora. Next table. Kia ora. Um, mine's not as deep as that, but I'll go with sure. it. Um, the coffee cup. Connecting people, laughing, smiling, having fun, play fueled by coffee. And I'm a portfolio Beautiful. manager. Beautiful. Thank you. Next one. And if the other person with the mic could get, give them, get someone else ready at the table, because we've got four minutes and I just want to hear them go, go, go. I imagine my best at work when we were opening a new community facility. Um, so the title of mine is Partnership. People holding hands, playful dancing together, whole community. Gorgeous, thank you. Kia ora. Um, mine is called Privileged. Bodies standing tall, smiling faces, thriving, alive, leading and playing. Gorgeous, thank you. Next one. Uh, yes. Kia ora. Mine is entitled Mountain, cold, blue, crystal clear, excitement of play awaits, stoke, fun, joyful mates. Um, mine is called um, Tufoka Roraria, and it goes, my mountain rose up, playing above the clouds waiting to have a real name. I was the mayor in Myself and um, Sir Timothy Regan named the highest mountain in Central Otago. Mmm, beautiful. Kia ora. Yes. Mine is titled uh, Hall in One. Um, <laughs> sitting together, we share knowledge, learning from each other, guiding our future. Today's play, Hall in One. Beautiful. Yes. My title is People Holding Hands. Um, tamariki play, time, space, and understanding. That's what connects us. 
Beautiful. Thank you. Pass on the mic. Yes. Uh, kia ora. Um, mine is titled Smiling Faces. Laughing out loud smiles makes me feel some kind of way. My best life is play. Oh, gorgeous. And your role? Yeah. Uh, I'm the CEO of Basketball New Zealand. Awesome. Thank you. Yes. Kia ora. Prism. Starting with questions, playing with hypotheses, our answers refract. Oh. <laughs> your role? Kia ora. Strategist. Okay. Yes. Uh, mine's called Play. Keen, capable team, helping Kiwis play safe, boom. <laughs> Thriving, fun, NZ. And I'm an injury prevention leader with ACC. Gorgeous, thank you. Next, next, yes. Yes. Uh, kia ora. Uh, mine's called Toki. Um, a team together, supporting one another at work, play and life. Gorgeous role. Uh, I'm the leader of targeted investment at ACC. Awesome, thank you. Yes, yes. Uh, mine's called Connections. Um, so, playful, wairua, igniting the universe, love, changing the world. So my role is to harness passion and enable empowerment. And I'm the chair of Variety. Excellent, thank you. I've got time for two more. Two more, yes. Uh, kia ora. Um, mine's called Helicopter. <laughs> Downdraft, blades, noise, dust, player in life, circling death lift his broken body. So sorry, that's a bit macabre, but... And your role? I'm an intensive care paramedic. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. And last one, lucky last. Uh, kia ora, um, mine's called Party. Free chat, love of tribe, open play, connects deeply, bank energy, act. Mm, and your role? Uh, I'm here as chair, chair of uh, Active South, but I'm a program manager. Gorgeous, thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. So that's just a collective oral poem. What I'd really like you to do is, when you exit the room, there's a couple of post-it notes stuck on the windows out there. I want you to stick your post-it note there so that we have this wall of words blessing us, connecting us for the rest of the day as you walk back and forth so everyone's able to read and appreciate everyone else's. So thank you so much. Have an amazing rest of the day. Um, it's been an honour to be able to share with you um, a bit of my work and to facilitate your own creative response in telling your tale. Kia ora.